Hello everyone, what would happen if we flooded Mars? Today on Universe in Box, we're pouring in 1, 10 and even 100 quintillion liters of water. Let's see if the red planet Mars can truly become blue. Let's go. And the very first experiment for today is an object with an astonishing 1 quintillion liters of water. A truly immense amount. Let's see how it will transform Mars. Here, I'm showing the composition of this object. And here it says that the amount of water is as follows. If you decode this value, it's exactly 1 quintillion liters of water. If you turn off the atmosphere and clouds, this is what it looks like. Here the Roche limit is already at work, and matter is truly starting to be torn away. The collision has indeed begun. By the way, I'll also mention that I've disabled gas loss for this water object. So the object is crashing in. We can see a lot of particles flying off into open space. And the water like a tsunami sweeps across Mars like this. Everything looks incredible. If you go down to the actual surface here and see what it all looks like. Oh, what a powerful wave is rushing through. But if you look closely over here, it's truly an amazing and very breathtaking sight. Well, that's pretty much how it all looks. And here are more waves. Tsunami waves sweeping by. Let's go back to space. Everything looks epic here, of course. I'll speed up time. Now, various gases are beginning to appear, and the atmosphere is starting to become quite saturated indeed. And now I see. Clouds are starting to form on Mars. Let's take a look from all sides. What's happening here? Yes, as you can see there are clouds here. And we can see a lot of gas swirling around Mars after this collision. Now let's take a closer look at how Mars is transforming. Here let's open the temperature display. You can see different readings. Average, maximum and minimum. I'll speed up time and also turn off the atmosphere and clouds visually. And now we can already see vegetation appearing on Mars. I'm speeding up time again. The area covered by vegetation is still only here, it hasn't spread over there yet. But first, let's wait until the temperature stabilizes. Maybe the water will spread on its own. Everything here is flooded. It looks like the area of vegetation is increasing. And now it's starting to spread onto this part of the continent. Something is starting to freeze here. Oh, and the freezing is really intense now. It's still going to be way too cold here on Mars. Let's try to spread the water evenly across the whole planet. This is how much of Mars got flooded, even with an object containing 1 quintillion liters of water. But what will happen if I release 100 quintillion liters of water? Now the Valles Marineris is flooded. We can see that due to the low temperatures, life on the planet eventually disappeared. I'll turn on the atmosphere display and the clouds. I also need to distribute all the gases evenly. Let's see if the temperature has stabilized at all. Well, yeah, minus 28 is the maximum temperature at the equator and the average is minus 44. And in the end, the surface pressure ultimately settled at precisely 0.11 atmospheres. The probability of life, consequently, comes out to almost 4%. Basically, everything will gradually freeze, and the crucial point is abundantly clear. The second experiment is up next. This time, our object will have 10 quintillion liters of water. Here, you can see, this value is set, for anyone who doesn't believe it. Well, let's see what difference there will be this time compared to the previous experiment. After all, this object has 10 times more water than the first time. I'll show you something else. Last time, I told you that if I go into the simulation, here I turn off the gas loss for this object, since its mass isn't that great, so that all this water doesn't escape. The collision has already started there. Let's get a bit closer here. As you can see, the water is already pouring out, and a tsunami is starting to sweep through. And once again, clouds immediately start to appear on Mars. That's precisely how the simulator processes it. If there's a distinct possibility for clouds, they appear right away. Your Mars object still has half of it remaining. And this is what it all looks like from the foreground. Alright, I'm speeding up time. Look at how the water is flowing. Oh, look at how much gas is being released right away. I'm curious to hide the atmosphere and clouds to see if any vegetation has appeared anywhere yet. No, it doesn't look like there are any green traces. Wait, there are. Look, there's some greenery right here. Can I get down there? There it goes, there it goes. So you can see it so clearly. Awesome. Now let's take a closer look. The maximum temperature at the collision site is currently over 3000 degrees. And I'm speeding up time even more. I'm speeding up the atmosphere and clouds. We can see greenery along these small bodies of water. But for some reason there's less water this time. Or maybe a lot of it just went into the clouds, into these gases, because everything really looks very dense here. This time, let me distribute the water evenly, right away, just like that. It actually even seems like there's a little bit less of it than there was last time. Or is it just me? Let's take a look at the gases. I'll fast forward time some more, let the temperature finally stabilize. So let's do it this way. Let's make sure the maximum temperature here is somewhere around 40 degrees Celsius. Then I'll spread everything out evenly. 
Start the time and we'll see if it all stays in place or not. But for some reason it's not really dropping anymore, it's at 53 degrees now. Well, let's just leave it like that. Now again, let me explain in detail. I'm once more spreading the water evenly across the entire surface, and now I'll show you how the gases are distributed. I'm evening out the gases, and as we can see, a very fairly dense atmosphere has quite formed on Mars, so much so that you actually can't really see the surface. So let's hide everything like this. Wow. And here, our entire planet is almost completely verdant green, with just a few arid desert-like regions and everything else is lushly green, except for the far northern and southern polar parts where there's perpetual snow. The surface pressure is just a bit over one atmosphere. Absolutely perfect, guys. Well, of course, the probability of life isn't the very best, but it's still not bad at all, at precisely 31%. The average temperature is about 29 degrees Celsius. Now that I've completely removed everything, this is precisely how Mars looks under normal, realistic lighting conditions. And I think if we look at the dark side of Mars, we'll see the lights of the night cities. Here they are, actually. But perhaps an immense object that contains as much as 100 quintillion liters of water, I've carefully set that specific value, will indeed affect Mars quite differently. And now, the inevitable collision truly begins. You can already see water appearing there, and the object itself has entered Mars. A huge wave of water is rushing forward, clouds are forming. So far everything is going absolutely great, indeed. So this is more or less how everything looks. A lot of gases have appeared around Mars in orbit. Not everything is staying on the surface after all. All right, let's take a closer look. At this point, the pressure is already showing over four atmospheres, and this value is increasing rapidly. We can see the spread of gases. Right away, we see a huge amount of water in the atmosphere, more than one and a half thousand Martian atmospheres, a dense atmosphere, clouds. And let's wait for Mars to cool down completely. Let it cool to reasonable values. Now, I will evenly distribute all of the water. Well, what more can I possibly say, really? A hundred quintillion liters of water didn't end up flooding Mars completely. And if we bring back the atmosphere and clouds, well, most likely a lot of the water is actually in the atmosphere. Let me also distribute the atmosphere evenly, I mean, these particular gases. However, everything here completely evaporates in this specific area, because it's still 480 degrees Celsius here. Well, let's speed up time and let it drop below 100 degrees. And now I'll try once again to evenly distribute the water and evenly distribute all the gases. So this is the situation with Mars. For some reason, there's a lot of ice. Life has already disappeared again. And I'm speeding up time. We see that the maximum temperature at the equator will also drop below zero. It's very cold on Mars. It's kind of unclear why it's like this. Well, you can see for yourself, it is what it is. So, what do we end up with? Recently I watched for a bit, and the temperature is indeed dropping, but slowly, and the pressure has also dropped significantly. But at first, as you saw, the pressure was even higher than on Earth. But in the end, when everything froze, the pressure just disappeared, because the atmosphere, roughly speaking, settled onto the surface. And the probability of life after all this is less than 1%. And this is how Mars looks from space just like this. In the very end, when I finally launched an object with 10 quintillion liters of water, it had the absolute best effect on Mars. You saw it yourself, there was life and the temperature was normal. Everything was great. So basically, this is how Mars changes from a drop to a flood. Would you really like to live at the Martian Ocean Resort, huh? Like the one that we have got with the 10 quintillion object. Write in the comments and don't forget to leave a like. Thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you again in the universe.